So this is the Masco ME27. It's a PA amplifier from 1956, but when you plug a guitar into it, it sounds like this. Now I bought this amp from Carter Vintage Guitars in Nashville a few weeks ago. I was there filming a video with my friend Zach and I saw it literally from across the store. It caught my eye because, I mean, look at it. And I could tell it wasn't a straight ahead guitar amplifier, but after turning it on, plugging it up and playing one chord, I decided I had to have it. I've never played another amp that sounds quite like this. Now this is a PA amplifier from the mid 1950s. It's all tube, there's a pair of 6L6s in it, it's 40 watts. And other than installing some quarter inch jacks for guitar in and speaker out, the previous owner tells me that it's just the stock amplifier and it sounds unbelievable. Sounds like there's water in the microphone. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what that is. That's weird, man. So this was not designed or built to be a guitar amplifier. In the mid 50s, when this thing was built, if you had a bingo hall or a school or a church or anywhere you had to have a public address system, there were no transistors or solid state amps like we have now to amplify the vocal, so they had to have tube amps. Now I've heard of guitar players repurposing these old PA amps for guitar amps, and it makes sense. I mean, the topology of the circuit is somewhat similar. The assortment of tubes is somewhat similar to what you would get in a tweed amp of the era, but it just had a different application. Now, like I said, when I saw this thing at Carter Vintage, I had no idea really what it was. I didn't know if it was just the head shell of an old PA amp that someone had modded and put like a tweed circuit in. But according to the previous owner who messaged me on Instagram. Alexander, who used to own this amp before me, says it's a 1956 Masco PA amp. The circuit is original and I had it converted to use quarter inch jacks. I got it to fill a sonic void chasing tweed sounds without the need to spend tweed money. It's 40 watts, so it pushes a massive amount of air. I threw 6L6 Fender tubes in it and it was recently serviced by Jeff Andrews here in Atlanta. And the interesting thing is he says he found it in Alaska of all places. Ben Harper had used one before and he wanted to give it a whirl. He's owned one for the last four years now and the tweed cab at Carter's was built for it. I wish I would have known that or I would have picked that cab up as well. So yeah, it's just a simple amplifier from the mid fifties that was designed for a public address system in like a bingo hall or a school or a church. But when you plug a guitar into it, it sounds absolutely massive. <laughs> This amp is a total secret weapon in a studio. It's not clean, uh, it's not transparent at all. It's not like a pedal platform amp in the way that we would traditionally think of it. It's got a ton of character and a massive amount of gain. I mean, I've got my volume on this guitar rolled halfway off and the amp set relatively low and I'm getting some really nice, clean, sort of saturated sounds with the, the mule here. <laughs> But if I roll my volume on my guitar up, it really starts to get really driven.
it's super cool. A little reverb and slap back coming from the pedal board going into the amp. It's tons of fun. I see why players like Ben Harper, uh, as well as Blake Mills, rely on these sort of weird, quirky PA amps from the 40s and 50s and 60s. And that's where I first started to hear about this stuff, was Blake Mills talking about using like projector amps uh, for his sound, getting a really sort of fuzzy, distorted, saturated, character-filled guitar sound from an amp that was not designed to be a guitar amp. And like many things in the guitar world these days, you know, a few years ago, you could pick these amps up for next to nothing, but word is starting to get out. These are really cool. And if you can find one, uh, the prices aren't crazy. They're not astronomical. I paid around 650 bucks for this at Carter's, uh, but honestly, I think it's money well spent. This is different than anything else in my amp setup. It's got this tweed character to it, this really mid-rangey, punchy overdrive, but it does this thing that I've only ever experienced in high-powered, like 100-watt Marshalls or, or Laney's, and it's the thud. I've talked about it before, but this amp does it. You can't hear it really in the video, uh, and I'm going through the aux right now, but in the room, even coming through my computer speakers, my monitors here, it has so much low end because it was designed to be a PA amplifier, so the idea was that it would have as wide a frequency response as was possible at the time. So it has a ton of low end, and when it comes through a guitar cabinet, you get this really, really tight low end punch that sort of accentuates the transients of your notes. And when you're picking single note lines, especially if you're playing uh, through a bigger cabinet or you've got it going through a set of computer monitors with a, a sub like I am now, you get this thud thing that happens. And the other cool thing is, like a tweed amp, the volume controls are interactive. So right now I'm plugged into the mic input one, which is right here. But listen to what happens if I just push the volume control on input two up. you get a ton more gain. But it doesn't necessarily fall apart. It still stays relatively intact. Now you can push it to absolute insane levels, almost like a fuzz pedal. Now if I bring volume two back down and push volume one, it's a slightly different character of overdrive. And then you could just back it down with your guitar's volume knob and get this really nice, pushed, sort of uh, broken up clean sound. It's just a different kind of breakup. I mean, it's, it's got some martial character to it. It's very Tweed-esque but it's not an exact copy of either one of those things. It, it does the mid-rangey, punchy tweed thing, but it's got a ton of low-end thud like a big Marshall does, and it cleans up really, really well. It, it's a total studio recording secret weapon. I don't know that I would take this out on the road. It seems a bit fragile, but for working here in the studio as a recording amp or putting vocals through, I mean, it's, it's pretty killer. So that's my quirky little PA amp from the 50s that I bought on a whim a few weeks ago. I couldn't be happier with it. Uh, and I highly recommend you start to look for something like this. Like I said, prices on these are starting to go up. Um, so it's up to you to decide whether something like this is worth it, if you could make use of something like this. I don't know that it would be a great gigging option because like I said, it does seem pretty fragile and it's relatively old. But if you want something for home use that is really cool and unique and looks great, it's a statement piece, these old projector amps, these old PA amps, these quirky little amps from the 40s, 50s, and early 60s are kind of a steal. Like the previous owner, Alexander, said, it's a way to get into that vintage tweed sound without paying vintage tweed prices. If I was gonna buy a tweed deluxe of the same year, of 56, I, you're talking easily three, four, five, six thousand dollars, depending on the condition of the amplifier. This was like six hundred and fifty dollars, and for all intents and purposes, it gets me in that same ballpark, that same territory, while doing something a little bit unique and a little bit different. 
So that is the Masco ME27. Let me know what you think about this amp in the comments section down below. If you wanna support the channel, check out the links in the description. We've got some brand new video courses that just dropped, including the Bass Guitar Survival Guide. That's a course designed for guitar players who are thinking about getting into bass guitar that I did with my good friend, Philip Conrad. Find out more information about that in the description box down below. Uh, also subscribe, it's a great way to help the channel out. And according to my analytics, still 60% of the people that watch this channel on a regular basis are not subscribed. Subscribed. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Rhett Schull, and I will catch you on the next one.